All right, in this video we're going to see how to simplify rational expressions. I have two pretty basic examples. Uh, the first one we have this rational expression with x squared minus 7x plus 6 in the numerator and x squared minus 3x minus 18 in the denominator. And uh, the first thing you want to do is if you have any just regular polynomials, you want to make those into rationals by making them a fraction with 1 for the denominator. Uh, same thing you do with regular numbers. If you have a whole number and some fractions, you want everything as written as fractions. So um, a rational expression just means uh, polynomials as fractions. So uh, we don't have to worry about that for this example, but we will see that in the next one. Um, if there's adding or subtracting or multiplying and dividing, you follow pretty much the same rules as you would for real numbers. For adding and subtracting is the hardest. You need to get a common denominator. Multiplying and dividing is easier. You just go ahead and multiply the numerators. Um, multiply the denominators for multiplying, and then dividing, you need to multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. Uh, we don't have any operations here either. We just have a regular old rational expression. And so at the end, just like with real numbers, you want to reduce your fraction. Um, but it's a little different here. So how do we reduce is to factor. It's a good application for factoring. Um, so let's go ahead and factor the top and the bottom. Since the leading coefficient is 1, we can do this pretty easily. We need two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 7. And uh, those numbers are, of course, negative 6 and negative 1. And the bottom we need the uh, same idea, leading coefficient is 1, and so we can just look for two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add up to negative 3. And those numbers are negative 6 and, negative, and positive 3. Right? Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3, negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. So you factor the numerator, you factor the denominator. Then if you have a factor that's the same on the top and bottom, those can divide to 1. And uh, then the 1 just sort of disappears. So notice x minus 6 is in the top and it's in the bottom. That means we can just get rid of that and have the reduced version of that rational. And you don't really need the parentheses here anymore, so if you want to get rid of those, you can too. But it shouldn't mark it wrong for having those. So this is something you want to do at the end every time you have a rational is just to get those reduced. Let's see a problem where there's some actual multiplying going on. And we're going to have to do step one here because you have a regular polynomial that's not as a fraction. And, and so if you want to sort of work with this rational, which is a fraction, you need to have everything as fractions. So that's what I mean with step one. Let's go ahead and make this a fraction. And so just that. So it's, anything can be written as a fraction over 1, right? So whole numbers over 1, polynomials over 1 become rationals. Now, what's the rule for multiplying, right? Multiplying is pretty easy with fractions. You just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Now, if you think ahead to step 3, where we're going to factor, you don't actually want to distribute, because distributing and factoring are opposites. So don't distribute in the numerator. Instead, really, we're just bringing these together as one fraction. So 1 times x minus 1 is x minus 1. And up top, we have the x squared minus 1 and the x plus 4, and we'll just write them next to each other. So multiplying can be thought of as just kind of bringing these together as one rational, one fraction. Now, what about reducing the fraction? The same as what we did at the end last time. And it kind of looks like it is all factored, but in fact, the first piece here can be factored further. Right? That's a quadratic, and it can actually be written as x minus 1 times x plus 1. And you can check by distributing that you get x times x is x squared, and negative 1 times positive 1 is the negative 1. And the other terms, you have negative 1 and x, which is negative x, and x and 1, which is positive x, those add to 0. So you would actually get x squared minus 1. 
So there it's fully factored, and you see we do have the x minus 1 on the top and bottom, so we can get rid of those. At this point, you don't really need the fraction because there's nothing left on the bottom, so we'll just write it like that. You could distribute that out, but uh, it depends on what you're headed to next in the problem, um, but you don't need to here. But it also shouldn't be marked wrong if it is distributed out.